So what's the difference? What really counts? Well, I would say that you will measure health is enormously important, and that's a matter of a fair amount of luck. I mean, you know, so I won't. I don't want. I'm not shortchanging it. I'm just saying you can't do too much about that. But you will measure your success in life by whether, by how many, and the extent whether it's the people you want at 70 or whatever the age may be. You'll measure it by how many of them really love you. You know, in the end. I mean, you can't. You know, you you, you can't buy love. I mean, it, it doesn't work. You can buy sex. You can buy testimonial dinners. You can buy your name on buildings. You can do all kinds of things. But the, you know, the only way you get to be, you know love is to be lovable. It's kind of irritating, actually. If you got a lot of money, it'd be more fun to just write out a check for a million dollars. So everybody, you know, from now on loves me. But it doesn't work that way. And in fact, you know, it, it, the only way is to be is to be lovable. And and you know, I've got this friend. Who uh, who came out of Auschwitz and had a, at least one member of the family die there? And what is it now? It's uh, 60 years later. You know, she still, when she looks at people, it's a Polish Jew. When she looks at people, the question she asks herself in determining who she really trusts as friends, the one question in her mind is, would they hide me? Now, when you get to be 70, if you've got a lot of people that would hide you, you've had a successful life. I know people who have a tremendous amount of money; no one would hide. Their own kids wouldn't hide them. I mean, they—they they really wouldn't. I mean, their business associates wouldn't, or anybody else. If it really came down to it, you know, they—they they don't have anybody's respect. They've got their attention, maybe, with money or something of the sort. But they—they they, nobody loves them. And. Uh, my friend Tom Murphy at Cap Cities TV. I mean, dozens of people would hide Murph. You know, all kinds of people would, would hide my wife. You know, and, and, uh, Ben Graham. A lot of people would hide my, my dad. It would have had a number. And then, like I say, that I can I can tell you people that uh, you know everybody may pay homage to him, and the kids may put up with him and hope they don't change their will or something. But the truth is that nobody would hide him. And if you've got a lot of people that would hide you. When you get to be 70, uh, you will have a very successful life. Okay, right in front. Just in terms of personal goals, or, or just goals that you've set for your life that you've accomplished. Yeah, well, I would. You know, the truth is, the main goal I've had has been at Berkshire. I mean, you know, it, it might be more admirable to say that I was feeding the poor or something someplace in India, but it, it, it isn't true. I mean, it, it, it's, it, it's been the focus of my life most of the time. The money will be, I think, used for very good purposes later on. I, I don't use any real amount of it myself, but actually, somebody else is going to do most of that, and, and I pick good people to do it. Uh, but. You know, I I've got three kids of which I'm enormously proud, and they and they like each other. They get you know they they do things together. They work you know the the, the family unit works extremely well. But my wife gets 99.9 percent of the credit for that. I mean, if you didn't turn out well under her, there's something really wrong with you. Uh, and uh, it's you know it, it's uh, uh, it's a life that's a lot of fun, but it's I do what I enjoy doing. I, you know, it, it, uh, I I play lots of bridge on the internet because I, you know, I, I like to do that more than anything else. I used to do way more reading. I do a lot of reading, but I I used to just read all the time. Now I spend 12 hours a week on the internet playing bridge, and I, you know, it's it's great. I I will talk to the Microsoft Summit here in about a month, and I tell this group, and there's all these high-powered internet types, and I tell them, look at, you know, you guys are all failures <laughs> because here I am. Got all kinds of money, you know. I've been fooling around with the internet now for 10 or 12 years. I spend 12 or 14 hours a week on it, mostly bridge. But I do, you know, the Google searches, and if I'm writing a talk, I look up all kinds of all kinds of information on it. You know, I read the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, 10 o'clock the night before, and all these things. And you guys are getting exactly 120 bucks a year out of me. <laughs> I mean, that is a failure. I, they have not figured out how to get any money out of me. And and I, I gave them this talk last year, and this year I'm going to go back there and say you, you've made no progress at all. You know. <laughs>
Uh, it's 120 bucks last year, it's 120 bucks this year, and in between I've had 600 hours of enjoyment and learned all kinds of things. Uh, so I, I, I do enjoy, you know, that, I enjoy that more than anyone. Anyway. Now when I was young, I thought I had a lot of money. I, you know, I, I don't know professional sports team and I play golf all the time, maybe have my own private golf course, and all kinds of things. This doesn't mean anything to me, you know. I, 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 I have something where 365 days a year, everything is good. I work around terrific people. One of them was here today that came with me that drove me down. And, and I mean, I get to select the people I work with. That's a huge, huge luxury. I mean, I literally. Just think of if you had to work for a boss you couldn't stand, you know, or work around people because your stomach could churn. This way, I mean, it'd be miserable. So the ultimate luxury really is doing something every day that you love doing with people that you love doing it with. And, and I've got that, and, uh, you know, by accident. Something like I say if you, if, you, if you take on a job just to make a lot of money and it causes your stomach to churn, you know, and you go home at night and kick the dog and all that sort of thing, you know, that, that's a little bit like marrying for money. You know, it's, it's probably a bad idea under any circumstances. But if you're already rich, it's crazy, right? I mean, if I marry for money, I mean, I would have my head examined. And, and what's it going to do? You know, and, and so it, it's, you know, it's, it is. And we're lucky in this country. I mean, we won what I call the ovarian lottery when we were born in this country. You know, it was four times or likely you would have been born in China, just about as likely you'd have been born in Bangladesh. You know, you're born in the greatest society in the world, so make the most of it and have a good time. Let's see, who's that? Oh, okay, up there. You two guys are next to each other. You can fight it out. <laughs> Whether it be professionally or personally, have you and your business been in Omaha or in the state? Well, yeah, it's a good question. Why do I stay in Omaha? Well, I love it. And, uh, you know, my, my grandfather went to Central High. My dad went there. My wife went there. My kids went there. And now my grandchildren are there. They, they all, the, my grandchildren say they, they, they have the same teacher that my grandfather had. <laughs> the, 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 uh, but there's continuity, there's friends, there, there, there's all kinds of things. I mean, there's no disadvantage to being in Omaha. I mean, I like New York when I'm there. I've got a house in California, you know, and I, I get around some, but I can't imagine anything better. I mean, I, I, uh, you know, what, what doesn't it have? I have a home. I've never sold a house in my life. I have a home I moved into in 1958, so I've been there about 45 years or so. I'm five minutes from the office. I moved into the office in 1962. I've been in there 41 years. We've just gotten, so we've taken a, a, we take a whole floor. It's taken us 41 years to where we can use a whole floor. <laughs> kind of discouraging. Uh, but there, there I am, five minutes from the office. Everything's easy, and it all works. I know all my, I, you know, I've known the doctors all my life. I've known everybody. At, uh, uh, I feel connected. Uh, my aunt taught in the public school system in Omaha. I, I named a scholar, a uh, prize that I give after her. But I mean, it all means something. And I've lived in New York for a couple of years. I've lived in Washington, D.C. for some years. I never felt that kind of connection at all. So and there's absolutely no disadvantage. You know, I, the, uh, you know, I, I get the same information. Actually, with the, with the internet and, you know, and Bloomberg and all that, I. I no one can get any information any faster than, than I can get it, and uh, there's just no downside. And I think it's been a terrific environment for my kids to grow up in. I mean, my kids have grown up in a neighborhood, perfectly normal neighborhood. I mean, you know, no fences around it, no, you know, no golden ghettos or anything of the sort. They've gone to an integrated public school. School that's probably had between 20 and 30 percent black students for 75 years. They have great teachers. You know, I mean, I, I, I think that, you know, part of education is a total life experience. And uh, I think it's great that we have a good public school system in Omaha. I mean, if, if, if I lived in Washington or Los Angeles or New York, I'd have to send my kids to private school. I wouldn't want to do that. Uh, I'd do it because I wouldn't send them to a vastly inferior school just to prove some point. So, but the nice thing about it is I haven't had to make that choice in Omaha. I've got classy public schools, the same kind I went to, you know, 50 or 60 years ago. and. They get more out of that experience, in my view. They have a better balanced view of life going through that experience than, you know, if I sent them off to some private school. I was with, actually, last week, uh, 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 there were six couples. Um, Bill and Melinda Gates arranged it, and, and they had the headmaster of a private school in Seattle that, that Bill went to. It's a classy school. But, you know, if you're 
I gather from the, in terms of the public school system that you're making a conscious decision to hurt your kid if you don't send them to a private school, if you can afford one, you know, and that's why these people do it. And I don't blame them. I mean, I do the same thing. But the nice thing about it is that all along, I'm sure Lincoln as well, and throughout Nebraska, we have kept a good public school system. And frankly, I think that's one of the most important things in America because one of the things made, has made America what it is. Think, think about it. 1776, 3 million people in America, 300 million people in China, and 100 times as many people. They had the same IQs we had. You know, they had the same physical abilities and all that sort of thing. They had a culture that went far back. They had lots of natural resources. We didn't know about it then because we didn't have oil and they didn't have oil, but we both had oil in the end. Coal, all these things, you know. Lot of educational institutions that far surpassed ours at the time. And now we end up, you know, 230 years later, we end up with, I don't know, 36 or 7 percent of the world's GDP. You know, from those three million people, something about the system really works. And I think one of the things that works about it is, is we come closer to equality of opportunity than any major country in the world. But the, one of the keys to having equal opportunity is a good public school system. You know, if you have one public school system for the rich and one for the poor, you do not have equality of opportunity. And, and I, so I, it, it's really one of the top things on my list. And when I got asked about, you know, what you could do with money, I think that. Anything that creates equality of opportunity right from the word go, I'm talking about from when you're five years old, and actually my daughter's working on something that goes back before that, but, but anything that creates equality of opportunity is what's going to keep you know, America, what, well, you know, the kind of America that we, we have now, it's, it's vital. And there's nothing more important than that than having a first-class public school system. And unfortunately, the communities where they've lost it don't get it back.